Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Pixel Intel. I'm Anthony, let's get into the gaming news for this week. Oculus had a gaming showcase this week. They showed off a bunch of games coming to Oculus Quest 2. In the showcase we also got an update for Resident Evil 4 VR. If it wasn't obvious, the entire game will now be in first person. They showed a bunch of new cool features in the showcase. Uh, they also said it will be running on Unreal Engine 4 with an unlocked frame rate and up res textures. You could physically pick up items. You could have different weapons in each hand, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, instead of navigating the menus, you could sort of just grab weapons off your body like you do in other VR games. I also thought they had a cool feature with the first aid spray where you sort of just grab it and spray it on yourself. I don't know, it's those little touches I like. Uh, no release date, but apparently it's coming out later this year. Now one caveat you have to know to this story is that uh, it's only coming to Oculus Quest 2 and to play on Oculus Quest you need to have a Facebook account. So do what you want with that information. A modder who goes by the name of Silent, who's usually known for his work in modding GTA, has found out that the entirety of Virtual Fighter 5, more specifically the Xbox 360 version, is in Yakuza 6 and Yakuza Like a Dragon. This was made possible after altering a small bit of code. Now you still got a few hiccups like the character customization not working properly, but the game's pretty much all there. Silent has since posted a GitHub link to the unlocker so you can try it out for yourself. Earlier this year, Xbox made an announcement that games that are free to play would soon no longer require Xbox Live Gold membership to play. Well this week, those changes are now in effect. Online games like Call of Duty Warzone, War Thunder and Fortnite will now be playable on your Xbox without being blocked by an Xbox Live Gold membership. Uh, this decision sort of came off the back of uh, earlier this year when Xbox announced that they will be increasing the price of Xbox Live Gold. Uh, after a bit of backlash, they backpedaled on that decision, and during their backpedaling, they also stated free to play games will now not require Xbox Live Gold. So, I guess from that, some good came out of it. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, a game loved and adored by many, is apparently getting a remake. Now, I say apparently for a good reason. Now, well known game journalist Jason Schreier went on the podcast MinMax to validate rumours. So if you listen to the podcast, uh, they pretty much ask about all the Star Wars KOTOR rumours, to which Jason replies, yeah, there's something there. So, he didn't make any massive confirmation, but he's sort of alluding to something, but I'll be a bit shy to say it's fully confirmed at the moment, but it's probably something to keep an eye out for. So Bandai Namco have been making colour Tamagotchi since 2009, but they've never been available in Australia. Now I haven't played much Tamagotchi since I was 9 years old, but hey, maybe you've got some uh, younger ones in the household that would be keen on this sort of thing. Uh, so this new Tamagotchi, it's actually, I don't know, it sounds pretty good. It's got a built-in camera, which lets you take pictures and you could sort of put your Tamagotchi on top of those pictures, like some sort of pseudo AR sort of thing. Uh, they also have a <laughs> they also have a social media for Tamagotchis called Tama Social, where you can share pics, trade gifts, and visit different Tamagotchis. So hey, um, not my sort of thing, but if you know someone who uh, who's a bit young on the younger side, um, maybe they'll enjoy it. Tamagotchi Pics is expected to release in September. Overwatch 2 director Jeff Kaplan has left Blizzard. This is coming straight from a blog post by Blizzard themselves, which states, We want to let you know that Jeff Kaplan has decided to leave the company after a long and storied career here, and that Aaron Keller, a Blizzard veteran and founding member of the Overwatch team, will be stepping in as game director. Keller has been at Blizzard for 18 years, so one less than Kaplan. Uh, what does this mean for Overwatch 2? Well, Keller states Overwatch 2 is moving at a good pace, and they plan to reveal uh, more this year and beyond. It sort of suggests that Overwatch 2 isn't coming out this year. Sorry fans. Kaplan left a personal note at the end of the blog post stating, I am leaving Blizzard Entertainment after 19 amazing years. It was truly the honor of a lifetime to have the opportunity to create worlds and heroes for such a passionate audience. 
I want to express my deep appreciation to everyone at Blizzard who supported our games, our teams and our players. But I want to say a special thanks to the wonderful game developers that shared in the journey of creation with me. Now if you go to the blog post on Blizzard's website, um, none of Jeff Kaplan's words are capitalized except for Blizzard Entertainment. I don't, it just seems very strange and also incorrect. I don't know why this is the case. I would have thought he would have at least uh, had a little video farewell or something, but this is what they decided to go with, I guess. This is one more big name to add to the list of industry veterans that have left Blizzard in the past few years. And now for some good news. Sony has reversed their decision to shut down the PlayStation Store for PS3 and PS Vita. President of Sony Interactive, Jim Ryan stated, it's clear we made the wrong decision here. So today I'm happy to say that we will be keeping the PlayStation Store operational for PS3 and PS Vita devices. PSP commerce functionality will retire on July 2nd, 2021 as planned. Well hey, two out of three ain't too bad. Earlier this week, Rockstar accidentally delisted every single one of their games from Steam. Moments later, they relisted every single one of their games onto Steam. Now when I say every single one of their games, I mean it. Midnight Club 2, a game that has been delisted from Steam for the last three years, was briefly purchasable for a very tiny window of time. We're talking minutes here. As quickly as it arrived, it was gone, with only a few lucky users being able to scoop it up before it got delisted again. Now, it's not exactly known why Midnight Club 2 has been delisted from Steam, but my bet would be music licensing. An indie game dev from Turkey who goes by the name of Moors released a standalone mod for the underground PC port of Super Mario 64 called Super Mario 64 Plus. It adds a ton of additions that enhance SM64 including but not limited to 60 FPS, more responsive controls, improved camera, extended moveset, the ability to continue a level after getting a star, optional extra modes and proper widescreen support. Nintendo has a track record of shutting these things down before they pick up any steam, but their 3D All-Stars collection didn't do much justice for Super Mario 64. Hopefully they let this one slide and don't come running with a cease and desist. But that's wishful thinking, I know that. And to finish things off, we got a character trailer for Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, showing Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy with his luscious hair. Resident Evil Infinite Darkness releases on Netflix on the 21st of July. So that's all for this week for Pixel Intel guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you did enjoy this uh, video, I make them once a week, usually coming out on Fridays. That's Fridays Australia time. So go ahead and subscribe. There'll be another one next week. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week guys. Take it easy.